Hey everyone, it's me Johnny Cage here. Welcome back to part two of the Dark Souls 2 Vanilla 1.0 full playthrough walkthrough. This is less of a walkthrough, more of a let's play, but I'm still explaining everything. Um, so a little different than what you're usually used to probably, but we're gonna keep going. All right, so I'll show you my stats. Currently level 15. Uh, I leveled my adaptability to 10 and I, point, I put, wow, I put another point into vigor. So I'm going to level adaptability to 18 and then stop there. This way we get a decent amount of iframes. Um, but the hitboxes in vanilla Dark Souls 2 1.0 are a little suspect, so hopefully that helps, but we may still get caught in some weirdness. Okay, so we are gonna go to Forest of the Fallen Giants, which is uh, one of two intro areas in Dark Souls 2. You kind of get a choice. Uh, it's either here or Hyde's Tower of Flame are really the two early game areas, but I like doing Forest of the Fallen Giants. It feels like it's meant to be the first area, at least in my opinion. So this door leads to nothing. I don't really know why it's there. Instead, we want to come over here and then pull this lever, and that opens this door very slowly. I don't understand what all the fanfare is about. Okay. So, there is a treasure chest down here. Uh, but, I don't recommend dropping onto the island because this game has an auto roll sometimes. And you don't want to trigger it. Let's walk down here. Open this chest. Get a human effigy. And then we can make this jump to get that item. You don't have to do this jump. But we can do it anyway. Perfect. There's a laggy sound effect. Alright. So here in the forest of fallen giants... There's going to be quite a few enemies that appear to be sleeping. And if I'm not mistaken, there's an ogre here. Is that ogre a scholar of the first sin thing? Oh, God, he's behind me. Uh, I was reading a text message. <laughs> it's not paying attention. Okay, I guess the ogre is only in scholar of the first sin. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. Sure, I guess. There's a bonfire over here. This one is really easy to miss. I missed it my first couple times through this game. I had no idea it was here. And then when I was on New Game Plus, you know, towards the end, I noticed, hey, I'm missing a, a warp point in Forest of the Fallen Giants. And, uh, yeah, it was that. Cool. So, we can move on now. I'm really surprised that Ogre isn't here. I always thought that was there in Vanilla. It's been a long time since I played Vanilla Dark Souls 2. Probably 2014. I didn't actually finish all the DLC on PS3. Um, I didn't actually finish the DLC at all. I think I got the first one on PS3, but then also got it on PC. This guy's actually alive. Just sleeping. Yeah, I know I got uh, Sunken City, or Crown of the... Whatever, King... Poison King, something, I don't remember. Crown of the Sunken King, right? Anyway, I got that one on PS3. I think I finished it. I'm trying to remember if I if I defeated Sin or not. I can't actually remember. Anyway, but then I switched to PC. I played the first two DLCs on PC along with, um, you know, the rest of the of the base experience, but I uh, I did not finish all the DLCs until I played Scholar, which if you know me at all, like I consume Souls games like nobody's business. But Dark Souls Two just I couldn't really get into it. All right, so wait for this guy to shoot an arrow and then pick up this treasure. It's just a soul. Nothing, nothing major. Over here. And we're gonna 
make another jump. Okay. Short sword, soul of the lost undead. And then you can either make the jump back, or you can actually just fall through that hole, and you should live as long as you're at full health. But we're going to go back down manually. Because I want to try to make this jump. I was not able to make this jump when we did Scholar. Uh, let me just pick up the treasures here. And I will explain the Hide Knight. Alright. So, in vanilla Dark Souls 2, Hide Knights are in different locations. I actually don't even know if this one's here in Scholar. I think they might have moved him. But, basically... Somebody told me recently, a, a YouTuber by the name of Allison by Proxy, which if you looked up any Elden Ring out of bounds footage from the network test, you're probably familiar with her channel. She mentioned to me that uh, Hyde Knights left Hyde's Tower of Flame and just sort of like wandered around the world. And that makes a lot of sense to me, uh, considering that they are in very weird places in Vanilla Dark Souls 2. Um, but they are passive unless you bother them. Um, yeah, and they're they're difficult. So I wouldn't recommend challenging them unless you really want to. So there's an item over here which is difficult to get. But we'll try. Nope. God. I'm not going to try that again. I wasn't able to get it last time. I'm not going to be able to get it this time. these PlayStation 3 loads. I have, like, nothing to say <laughs> while it's loading. <laughs> All right. Kill these guys again. Came up short so many times there. Don't forget about this guy. All right. Very good. Unfortunately, the archer up top respawned. I'm not going to go back up and kill him. Instead, we're just going to move on. All right, it's coming in here. Can I go through this hollowed out tree? And then you can jump through here and kill this guy. Remember, you want to watch out for the one behind you. And this frame rate mixed with the motion blur. Deadly combo. All right, you break this uh, I don't know, china cabinet bookcase thing. And then kill this guy before he notices you. All right, so we have a, a soldier over here. And then you want to try your best to kite him out. Because when you start climbing the staircase, there's going to be another soldier there. And then the one up top is going to try to throw firebombs at you. God. Okay. Luckily, we made it out of that alive. I think the firebomb hit us, or his hand did, but it didn't actually explode, which I guess is nice. He will climb the stairs, though. Yep, there he comes. 
Get yourself a, a boucler. All right, let's climb up here. And there's an enemy back here. And then we can open this door. This door will lead us to a bonfire. So once you spend enough souls with Melentia, she will move to Firelink Shrine. So what I recommend doing is purchasing Lenagrast's key. This opens up the Blacksmith and Medulla. Definitely buy that. You don't have to do anything else for now. Eventually, we will buy the Pharos Lockstone from her um, because there's a really cool mechanic in Dark Souls 2 where you can kind of like open doors and stuff using stones. They're sort of like keys that have a ton of uses. So that's it for now. And then if you talk to her, I think you got to spend a little more than a thousand. I think it's like eighteen hundred. But I'm just gonna talk to her, see if. Okay. So yeah, just buy the key and then she'll she'll leave. Uh, maybe they increased in scholar. I don't know. I'm the least familiar with Dark Souls 2 out of any of the games. Can I buy a torch from her? I didn't see if she offered it. No. Okay. I'm just checking to see something. Uh, okay, I only have 15 seconds left on my torch. I'm not going to go for it. Um, so we have a couple choices here. We can go this way, which is viable. Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's drop down here. There's a couple of different ways you can go. We'll do this first, because it's kind of out of the way. Uh, yeah, see, I was rolling, but I still got hit in the back. Which, I mean, clearly the, the axe hit me. I'm not saying it didn't, but in Dark Souls 1, it probably would have gone through me. So it takes a little while to get used to. And we can jump over here to this item. Yikes. Human effigy. Whoa, where is that guy going? Okay. And we can carefully make our way down here. Torch. This guy's hard to see, even though he's right at the end. He is difficult to see. I I missed him again until the last second when I said he's hard to see. <laughs> These guys blend in very well, which is kind of nice. It makes sense. Alright. Now, I don't think... Maybe there is an... There's very weird audio delays in 1.0. It was fixed. But, yeah. Okay, so there's no Ninja Turtles here. Those were added in Scholar. We have this tunnel here, which has a lizard at the end of it that can shoot fireballs. It shoots three at a time. Oh, hello. Where the hell did you just come from? Where did you also come from? Who are you people? Anybody else? All right, and then there's going to be a door on the left that I'm going to try to open. And then quickly roll through. 
You want to be careful, because when the fireballs hit the door, that can still hit you. Then we're going to open the chest. And this should be a fire longsword. Great. So, we can change out... Broadsword. Eh, it doesn't do as much damage. Once it fires the third one, you want to start running. I am going to check what that item is. I don't think it's anything important, but I, I will double check. I think the door will now block fireballs. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Soul with Brad Knight. Okay, great. If you'd like, you can kill that lizard from here. You just need a bow and a ton of arrows. And then you can also kill it from the other side, but not until way later in the game. Maybe those guys came from here. Who knows? All right. Cool, so let's rest at the bonfire now. And you'll notice, under my weapon, there's a durability bar. In vanilla Dark Souls 2, durability was incredibly aggressive. Um, and I think even on PC, it was worse because it was tied to frame rate. And the PC version ran at 60, but the durability values went down twice as fast. This was rebalanced in Scholar. It got a lot better. Your weapons could still break, um, but... It got better. So what you can do now is um, you could travel to Majula and level up your weapon. I'm not going to do that just yet. Instead, we're going to come up here. Actually, let's do this. No. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wanted to demonstrate the lighting, but I don't think it's really necessary up here. All right, so this door is locked. However, it looks broken. So what you can do is you can actually just attack it. And after you hit it a few times, it'll break. So, as you can see, like, this room, like, looks like it should be dark. There's no windows or anything, but it's it's not. <laughs> In Scholar, they did adjust the lighting, so things are a bit darker. Um, but, yeah, it still never really came all the way through. Okay, we can also go through here. And then there's going to be an enemy to our right. No? Maybe that was a scholar change. Estus flask shard and a white sign soapstone. And then we can also drop onto this branch very carefully. Pick up a divine blessing. Okay. How much is a Ferris Lockstone, lady? 4,000? It is 4,000. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to climb down. Yeah, in Scholar, there's an enemy, I think, right here, if I'm not mistaken. These guys are in perfect sync. Ugh, how dare you. All right, great. through here. There, go through this fog wall. Actually, before I go all the way through, I can't open this door, right? No. Okay. Great. I didn't think so. I just want to make sure. Okay, so this area, we actually have a couple choices. Uh, before we actually go all the way up, I'm going to drop down here. 
in, into this area. And we're going to rescue a gentleman named Kale the Cartographer. I mentioned him in our last video. Don't go that way. That way's death. So you want to come over here. And you need to move diligently through this area. Because there are quite a lot of enemies in really weird positions. Lots of archers. Lots of people throwing stuff at you. So you got to be you got to be quick and careful. I'm going to skip this guy and come over here. Always be moving. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. <gasps> oh, wow. Thank God. a weird corpse. I thought I was dead for sure. I'm just making sure. I I don't think I've ever fallen down here, so. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. That was lucky. Jump across the roof. Very good. And then we're going to go into this uh, little cave over here. Yep. But you want to be careful because this cave is booby trapped. There goes a rolling ball. Okay, so right here is Kale the Cartographer. Do you have to open his house? joy to me. Okay, yeah. So once he says I'll be back at Majula soon, he will uh he will go on his merry way. And then he also just gave us a key. The house key opens the abandoned house in Majula. Key to the abandoned house Majula received from Kale the cartographer. In the past Majula served as a dumping ground for horrible things but is now a gathering place for those with no better place to go. It seems this house in Majula was the final home for a few such souls. Okay, so we can pick up the amber herb and then make our way back out the cave the way we came in. And then we're going to go up this ladder here and start making our way out. But we are going to do one more loop. Oh my god. <laughs> right. Okay. So there's just a couple treasures here that I missed. Or just one actually. So there's a shard there and then the other one we can't actually get there until a little while. Or until later on in the game. Where the hell did that guy come from? So don't worry about him just yet. That path past the portcullis, um, or portcullis, is the door that I checked before if I could open that. I wasn't able to. So you don't have to worry about it. For a while. All right. So is this correct? I 
How do we get back? This is death. Oh, over here. Great. So yeah, past that portcullis is through this door. So that's that. I am actually just going to check real quick to see if Malentia, 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 I don't know. Let's see if she sells firebombs. I kind of don't think she does, but I'm curious. It'll help us out a good deal if she does. She does. All right, so buy, just get two firebombs, just to be safe. And then we're gonna open up a shortcut. Okay. Very good. You don't want to go up this ladder, at least not yet. So this guy up here will throw firebombs. Wow. What you want to try to do is get him to chuck one over here. That didn't work. Right. I'm going to reset this and do it myself. Let me just kill this guy. So, these barrels are in a pretty precarious position against this damaged wall. So you can actually blow the wall up. Pretty cool. Alright. What we're going to do... I feel like it's a now or never situation. There's no point in not doing it now. We're going to fight... Oh no, let me repair my weapon. Glad I looked at that. Let's travel back to Majula. We'll unlock the blacksmith's house. We'll upgrade our weapon. And then we'll fight the pursuer. Oh, we can also get a give her another shard. To see you. All right, so we're gonna open the door, and then just rest at the bonfire to like reset it, and then Lenigrest will start hammering away. So there's a chest in here, which is easy to forget. And there's a bow. And then I actually just want to check the house, because I think there are shards inside. I could be totally wrong, but I'm just going to check. So let's, uh, let's light our torch first, because there's a lamp downstairs that I want to light. Light the torch. Alright, let me 
use the house key that we just picked up recently. Mm, kale. Oh, great. That's a Ferris Lockstone, so we don't actually have to buy one from Malentia. At least not for a while. That's helpful. Okay, we go over here, go to the roof. That, like, huffing that you hear, those are the pigs from downstairs. From outside, the ones that chased us earlier. There are shards here. My memory was right. Yeah, so the sound is those pigs. Nothing to worry about. Kale talks about a sound coming from the house, but it's actually just those. Unless he's hearing something totally different. Which is always possible. Okay, so Kale, I guess, doesn't show up until you kill the last giant, if I remember. But we do have some skeletons down here. And the amount of skeletons here changes, I believe, depending on what new game you're on. And these skeletons are excellent for farming human effigies. They're almost guaranteed to drop them. If not completely guaranteed, actually. Another Estus Flask shard. So this chest contains event items. It's largely unused now. But that chest used to close and get new treasure every once in a while. I think the DLC keys were in there. I could be totally wrong about that. But I do know that that's specifically tied to events. I'm sure if I updated my game, the DLC key would either just show up in my inventory or something like that. Anyway. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade our weapon now that we have tons of shards. Oh, Lenagrast. So you sell some weapons, some arrows, repair powder, more shards. A typical blacksmith fare. And we can reinforce our sword. This is weird. I can't tell if this says... This is written backwards. It should say Titanite Shard 2 of 3, not 3 of 2. Anyway. We'll bring the sword to plus 2. We'll give Homegirl the shard. And then we will once again level up our adaptability. Okay. Now, let's go fight the Pursuer. So you only get one shot at this per playthrough. Killing him here does not kill, uh, does not prevent you from fighting him as a boss. He still shows up. But you do get some sick treasure if you manage to kill him. It is a difficult fight. He does a ton of damage. I really don't recommend using an Estus Flask for this. I recommend relying on healing gems because when you use a flask, you, um, you come to a complete standstill. And he can fly. So... You don't want that to happen. There he is. I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was someone else. Enemy poison this game is absolutely absurd. Okay. So once we come up here, the Pursuer will f get dropped off by his eagle. Let's go ahead and bonk that guy off. This way he doesn't interrupt you. 
Here he is. So I recommend uh, rolling into him. This way you get as many opportunities to deal damage as possible. As you can see, I am barely chipping away his life bar. He has a stab, and that stab can curse you. But I'm not sure if the curse is only in the boss fight or if it's here as well. I don't know why that second hit isn't registering. a slow and steady fight. There's not much to it. Oh, yeah. We were in a bad position there. Being against the walls in this fight. It's weird. So that's the curse. You really don't want to get hit by that, or otherwise you will get cursed. I have an itch on my head. I want to scratch it so bad. I got it. Hey, we got a stagger. That was nice. So you, you can stagger him, but you can't um, you can't repost him. No pasta for him. I do love his breathing. It's really nice. It's just a cool ambient effect. Not you don't really hear many bosses breathing, you know. You used to hear Smo laughing. That was about it. Lucky he stopped. I don't know why that second hit doesn't register sometimes. Right. I'm not going for the greedy third hit. I'll just take him down here. Oh! <laughs> he doesn't want to die. This is great. Okay, great. So we got the Soul of the Pursuer and the Ring of Blades. Great. And a ton of souls. Uh, in Scholar, there's a lot of treasure up here. Actually, let me reload and see if the treasure appears now that he's not there. Yeah, I'm curious now. Curious, curious, curious. That took a while. I thought the game froze. What is with that second hit? No. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. In Scholar, I think there's a, a shard, an Estus Flash shard up there. I think. Let's, uh, let's just bonk this guy off. And again, that Pursuer fight is, is one time only. I'm actually pretty... I'm pretty happy that we got that on the first attempt. Like, I haven't re-recorded... Oh, Jesus, bro. I haven't re-recorded any of these guys. This is all still first attempt. Usually, when I make these walkthroughs, I'll usually, like, start it. Record the first one, see how it goes, see what I like, what I don't like, and then record it again. But this, I'm just, I'm just going for it. So I'm glad, glad that went well. Okay, so through here we have quite a few things. Um, let's go here first, since we have a Pharos Lockstone, we can do quite a lot here. Uh, there are several ballistae, or ballistas. So we just got to run in and then run to the right. However. There's a whole welcoming committee here. But we can actually fight these guys outside. Uh. Yeah, 
I, I know this is cheap, but I don't care. I'm just going to roll back a bit, wait for them to leave. go. Okay. I thought there was three controlling the ballista, and then one over here. Whatever. Anyway, we get Great Soul Arrow, Large Soul of Lost Undead, and the Blue Wooden Shield, but we are not done here just yet. Since we got the Pharaoh's Lockstone from back in Majula, we can do uh, something over here. We can insert it here. And this is going to light up a wall over here. So this is an illusory wall. Now, in Dark Souls 2, illusory walls are bizarre. So we got a very early Titanite slab there. And then the Chloranthi ring, which is always fun. It restores stamina. And what's interesting is that this is literally like Chloranthi effect dot gif. It's like not actually attached to our character. It's just in the same place as our character, but it lags behind the character. It's very weird. Anywho. Oh. Trap. I totally forgot that was a trap. Sorry if you're not explaining. So, okay. Let's explain the trap, and we'll talk about illusory walls. So, some chests have traps. And what I recommend doing is, once you open them, either hold up your shield or roll behind the chest. Sometimes it's just a crossbow that shoots in four or five directions. Other times it's a poison gas cloud. If you see the gas cloud, just roll backwards a few times, and as long as you're not going to like fall off a cliff, you're fine. And some of them actually have explosions. The same strategy as the poison cloud will work for those. Just run away. Illusory walls in Dark Souls 2 are a little weird. They are bizarre. You saw that one had a Pharos Lockstone required, so you would think, okay, whenever there's a Pharos Lockstone, that means there's an illusory wall. Not necessarily. Sometimes Pharos Lockstones just open doors. Sometimes they do different things. Sometimes they activate traps, which is really cool. Um, illusory walls, proper illusory walls in this game, require you to press X, which is weird. Okay, so this door does not open from the side, but for some reason, if you bonk this door, a hollow soldier will open it for you. Because isn't he so nice? I don't know why that happens. Like, why that soldier opens that door. I don't get it. There's nothing explaining that you should do that aside from, like, a player note. It's very strange. Okay. Cool. All right. Because the next area can be quite treacherous, I'm going to spend my souls now. And then we'll come back and do the next area. So we're going to go back. Back, back to Cali. Cali. I'm actually going to California tomorrow. All right, let's go back to Majula. Do our thing. A 
Let's level up our weapon. Oh, whoops. Nice. Okay. Great. So I'm going to stop at 18 adaptability, and then we're going to build our character like we normally would. So primarily be a strength build. All right. Let's travel back to Forest of Fallen Giants. And now we're going to meet Pate. Mild-mannered Pate. Pate is a... He has an interesting, like, real-world backstory. So there's an actor uh, named Peter Serafinowicz. And if you've seen Parks and Rec, he plays Lord... I can... I want to say Lord John Marbury, but that's a West Wing character. He plays, uh, like, a British prince or something like that. Very funny character. It's sort of like uh, Andy's English counterpart. It's really funny. Oh my, oh my, oh my god. We're going to rest at the bonfire and restart that endeavor. Holy Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you've seen John Wick, he is the sommelier at the Continental in Rome. And I've known him from other roles, because I always thought he was really funny. But I'm drawing a blank as to what else he's played. Anyway, Peter Serafin uh, was a huge fan of Dark Souls 1 and then reached out to Bandai. And was like, hey, can I do a voice for the second one? <laughs> and so they made a mild-mannered Pate. So if you speak with him and the voice sounds familiar, it's because it's Peter Serafin Okay, so it's unclear if when you go through here, Pate is the one who closes the gate on you. I kind of doubt it because there's no switch here, but that does happen. Uh, what I recommend doing is equipping any bombs that you might have. Witching urns are great as well because once you go in here, you're going to get hit by like a cavalcade of enemies. Questionable. All right, so a lot of them. Wait, what? I thought they were supposed to like funnel out of that door. Maybe that's a scholar thing. I could have sworn that was a vanilla thing as well. Oh well. So, no, I think I hear them. Yep, they were just late. That's funny. Yeah, there's a couple more here. All right. There's a treasure here. And then if you press X on this wall, it's illusory. How the hell anyone was supposed to know that they made that change? Beyond explanation. Beyond comprehension. It is not explain I'm actually I'm gonna do something that I normally never do. In a second here, I'm gonna get the manual. I'm gonna do it. 
I'm gonna get the manual on these on these bastards. I'm gonna get the Maryland manual, like they say in the wire. Okay, let's open this up. I actually forget what's in here. While we open it, I'm gonna quickly rifle through the manual. Sorcerer's assistant, sorcerer staff, and the amber herb. Oh, there's no manual. It must be in the collector's edition box. Unless... I feel like PS3 games came with manuals, right? They were still doing that back then? I'm trying to think if this game came with... Like a vanilla case, because I have the black armor edition steel case thing. Anyway, you press X for illusory walls, unless they are done with ferrous lock stones, and then you just cut them. It's very strange. Okay, so we have made it out of the little gauntlet here, back to Pate. And then he gives us the full white sign soapstone. Well, I heard. Okay. Gonna unequip my bombs now. S actually. <laughs> Try this once. So these Ninja Turtle guys are notorious. Uh, they can spin and spin and spin, and you can't backstab them. gonna try to aggro him. Hello. It didn't work. Luckily with a plus four weapon they go down pretty quick. Okay, so this little area is actually optional, but we're gonna go here anyway. So in Scholar of the First Sin, um, they added soldiers that would bang on this tree. And there's like a lore reason why they did that. And it makes a ton of sense. Um, it's probably like one of the best lore changes they made in Scholar. And I hate not seeing them because it's just so interesting. Anyway, I, I won't reveal that lore reason until later in case you haven't played this. Okay. So we can come through here. But you do want to be careful because there's quite a lot of enemies. And they throw things at me. Try to make this jump. Nope. I feel like it was close during Scholar as well in my playthrough. Okay. I'm going to try to do one loop to get this item. If I fail to jump again, I'll just leave it. I know it's not that important. care. Jumping in this game is very strange. Okay, so once we go through here, which I thought this was a fog wall, we're going to come across a bunch of enemies. There's this door down here we can't open yet. We don't have the key.
Oh, this is the thought wall. Okay. Strange. Oh my god. I pressed R1 a second time. Anyway, what you want to do with this guy is you want to rush him. Because an enemy is going to drop. There he goes. But do be careful because you don't want to fall. In a in a trade show video, there was a ger a germ warrior, a germ warrior, uh, that threw axes on this sword. I feel like they it doesn't make much contextual sense for him to be there, but I thought that was a more unique challenge. Okay. Ugh, that frame rate, baby. Hey, crystal lizard. Couple shards. All right, cool. We have now completed a loop around this area, which is very cool. What we're gonna do, just because I'm running low on flasks, AKA I have zero, is I'm gonna open this door and we're gonna rest at the bonfire really quick. Now we're going to fight the first boss, which is the last giant. The last giant really isn't that difficult, especially if you've leveled up adaptability. But he actually gave me a ton of trouble my first time playing this game, which makes sense, right? Like, you know, your first boss probably going to give you a ton of trouble. Um, the reason I'm standing here is because I encourage you to go look at the reveal, the gameplay reveal of Dark Souls 2. They specifically show this shot in this location, and it looks completely different. It looks darker, it looks more evil. The fire is not just like jets, like it, that literally looks like fire.gif. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's weird, it doesn't look right. And that's because of the, the removal of the lighting engine. They touched it up a bit in, uh, in Scholar, but still looks nothing like what it was supposed to. But go look at the gameplay reveal and you'll understand. Okay. Cool. So there's an enemy here that you gotta be careful of. You can't open this door until way later in the game. So don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, last giant is pretty easy. You just walk under his legs, try not to get hit too much. And you won't have too hard of a time. At about 40% health. Whoa. He will uh, rip off his own arm and use it as a weapon, which is pretty gangster. Yep, here he goes. So while he's doing that, you can just wail on him. He doesn't get any damage reduction. Or, uh, you know. Any uh, super armor or anything. Ooh. I'm not going to go for the greed hit. I am going to heal. All right, there he goes. That's the last giant. With a plus four weapon, he's, he's trivial. It's really not that hard. So we got the soldier key along with the soul of the last giant. And now we can go back. And with the soldier key, we can fight the pursuer. But we can also open another door, which we're going to do first. The first thing we're going to do uh, before we open that door is we are going to uh, light a torch. Because I want to show you another thing. In that same gameplay reveal of Dark Souls 2, 
uh, the folks from From Software made a note to light the torch and show the lighting engine. And also an interesting change is that there was like a little barricade around this ladder, um, but they removed it. I don't really understand why. Anywho, so now that we have the torch lit, we can come over here. And with the soldier key, we can now open this door that I was uh, pointing out earlier. Before we do that, though, I'm going to kill this guy. Just to be safe. All right. This door was also different, and the door frame was different. It was stone. So we can come down... Actually, let me just show it to you. So we can come down here, and then you can, you can see in this hallway just fine. In Scholar, they did change this. It does get dark. But in vanilla, you can see just fine now. Oof. Nice. I do like how he can chase you. I think that's fun. He really, like, preys on your expectations. Whoa. Oh, God. He's got one more. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, you, you can see down this hallway just fine. In Scholar, they did make it darker. It is, It does look better. Um, what's also interesting is... Let me just check over here. I am correcting my suspicions. So in that gameplay reveal, I also like how it, the shockwave like totally stuns you. I think that's really cool. Okay. I feel like I pressed circle there. Um, in that gameplay reveal, I'm not sure if they changed it in Scholar, but there are skeletons in this room. But in in the release of the game, it was changed to these soldiers. Very weird. They just made like a bunch of strange design decisions. <laughs> like they don't make a lot of sense to me, and I find them frustrating. Like, okay, I get changing the lighting because it doesn't work, sure. But why change out the skeletons? Yeah, I don't get it. Anyway, for the sake of, you know, looks and everything, uh, I will light the torches. This way you can see what it looks like. I, I just really like the idea of sacrificing a shield for, for light. I think that's a really cool idea. And I'm pretty sure it's something they did in their older games, too. In Kingsfield and whatnot. And uh, Shadow Tower, I think is the name of it. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, it looks nice, you know, when it's all lit up. It looks really nice. Um, just doesn't serve a purpose. Okay, so lots of Ninja Turtles here. Lots of stuff going on. Pretty sure there's one behind this door. Yep, hello. Luckily, they cannot climb ladders. But there are two up here. Okay, it's one. Yikes. I think I hit the shell too many times. Otherwise, that should have been a kill. Name a soldier, cracked red eye orb. I feel like this guy is still going to be down here. Yeah, I hear him. You can't backstab these guys, so I'm not going to bother. If you try to get behind them, they'll just fall on you, sort of like the ogres do, which I think is a really cool thing. I, I like that they have armor that prevents you from backstabbing. I think that's a cool design choice.
I don't know if anybody saw that, but his weapon wasn't loaded. And that was funny. Wow, bro. Okay. So in Scholar, I remember getting invaded here. I'm not 100% certain if that'll happen. So we'll have to find out. We'll find out together. Yeah, his weapon isn't loading. It's goofy looking. Or, not that his weapon isn't loading, but his rigging isn't loading. I should say. I might die here. This is really bad. Alright. He's dead. That's really helpful. point of that is. Anyway. Grab these. Sometimes they quick draw. Right, so we got another tree of the giants. Or giant tree, rather. And then there's a bonfire here. Ta-da. All right. Very cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go fight the pursuer in boss form. Come on, load. I did this thinking it would be faster. It probably still is, but it's a long load. Okay. So to go fight the Pursuer, we just go back uh, the sh to the shortcut that we opened earlier. And now we can open this door. So I'm actually interested to see if my memory serves me correctly. What kind of enemies there are here. Nope. Okay. So, we're fighting more of the same soldiers. But in Scholar of the First Sin, they did something that I love to see games do. And that is they placed enemies from the next area that this leads to behind that door. So basically the enemies you start seeing in the next area after you defeat the pursuer, their lesser enemies will appear in here. It just like really contextualizes the world, I think. And I thought it was a wonderful change that they made in Scholar, but not present here. All right, so the fight with the pursuer is the exact same, except now you're on a cliff, so you can roll off. You gotta be careful. There are two ballista present. Um, you can try shooting them at the pursuer. It will deal tons of damage to him. But getting him to stay still long enough is pretty pretty hard. Whoa. Really? 
I did not know that killing him prevented him from being a boss. Is that true in Scholar of the First Sin as well? I really hope it is, and I'm, it's not just a bug. Anyway, there's there's an armor set down here. There's the Drain Lake set. Okay. I am, like, genuinely surprised by that. Truly surprised. You know what's kind of funny is last time, or during my Scholar playthrough, I recorded it, didn't like the way it came out, and then did it again. And on that first recording, I killed the Pursuer uh, on top of that roof. And then the second time I didn't, so I had to fight him. Okay, that is incredible. Learn something new every single day with Dark Souls. Let me just double check this real quick. Pursuer Dark Souls 2. It appears to have been that way. It appears that way in Scholar as well. Yeah, he doesn't keep appearing. That's only in Scholar. Yeah, okay. So it, that's it's the same thing in, in Scholar as well. I... I legitimately never knew okay so uh what we can do now is we can use this nest and then the bird that drops off the pursuer will take us to the lost bastille and in scholar of the first sin the pursuer appears in t three places in uh lost bastille yeah yeah three places he appears which is really cool because if the eagle knows to go here, it means that the pursuer is from there, or at least visits there often. So again, it adds context, it's really nice. So this is Lost Bastille, I'm not gonna go very far at all, I'm just gonna get to the bonfire. Uh, we'll do this place in a little while. We're not gonna do it next, we're gonna go to uh, Hyde's Tower Flame next. Okay, cool. So I'm literally, I'm just gonna leave right away. Go back to Majula and level up. Man, I can't believe that. Wow. Genuinely surprised. All right, we'll end it there. And actually, I'll explain the changes in Majula now. So now that the uh, the Lost Giant is dead, or Last Giant, Lost Giant, whatever that boss was, uh, Malencia has moved. So you can buy anything you like from her. And then Kale, the cartographer, has now moved as well. So he has officially moved into his house. I don't know if it's his house, but he, you know, said that he stays here. So maybe he's a squatter. Squatter's rights. Yep, here's Kale. So he mentions flames on the map. And uh, each, not each bonfire, but like each major bonfire that you light uh, will appear here on the map. So this is literally a map of Drang Lake which is pretty cool. So certain bonfires that you light will appear on the map. And then as you go through New Game Plus cycles and you continue to light them, eventually the flames will turn blue. And I'm pretty sure he gives you something after you turn every single one of them blue. Okay. 
Wow, textures in the well hadn't loaded. It's funny. Okay, so we're gonna end it here. Um, yeah, I really can't believe that about the pursuer. I had no idea that he would not appear as a boss. I guess I've never actually done that before. No, I've definitely killed him on the roof. Maybe it's just been so long that I didn't know or that I forgot. Anyway, that's it for now. It's pretty cool. Um, up next, we will go through Hyde's Tower of Flame. It's another area with two bosses, although it's very small and a lot easier in this version of the game than it is in Scholar, um, in my opinion, at least. But that's it for now. Uh, I will see you next time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls 2, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Join my Discord. The link for that is in the description below. As always, I'll switch Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.